Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this dog behind me. Uh, this dog was a commission. It was very fun to paint because it's all hair, nothing else. It's completely covered in hair. And my idea is to show you a little bit of the process of how I've done it. Now, my process is a little bit unconventional. Uh, usually you follow three steps when it comes to painting. You follow the block-in, uh, modeling and refining stages. Uh, I do it a little bit different. Uh, you'll see in a moment. So the whole process begins with me taking pictures of the dog. Now usually uh, customers will send me their pictures but if I live nearby I can go to their houses and take photos of the dog myself. See a lot of time customers they just take cute photos of their dogs or cats and they just don't think about it too much and they send them to you and you cannot use them because they're not appropriate for a painting. Now in the case of this dog I was lucky enough to live uh, very close to their home, to the owner's home, so I went there and I took a bunch of photos and the photos that I took there uh, were pretty good and these photos were very useful for the painting. Now I usually mix a lot of photos to make a painting, I don't use just one photo. So yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much the beginning. After I have those photos and they're good enough, what I do is I go to the computer and I just do a quick design of how the painting is going to look like. Now I don't like to refine the design too much because I like to do everything uh, on the painting while I'm painting. So yeah, that's pretty much all I need to say about that. Let's just let me just show you what I've done here. So I start off by using some regular black charcoal to sketch out my design and I'm going to use the grid to transport the design from Photoshop directly onto the canvas. Now as you can probably tell, my sketch is not really that beautiful, it's kind of messy. Uh, that's because I only need the sketch to really map out my elements. I don't really care for beautiful sketches, it's kind of unnecessary. So within 10 minutes I'm pretty much done with this one. And then I can erase the grid lines, which is not really necessary since I'm going to paint over them, but it makes everything look a little bit cleaner and less confusing for me when I paint. So with that done, now it's time to paint, finally. So for this painting I decided to do it with oil colors. This is usually the best way to go, honestly. Uh, for my brand I'm using Winsor & Newton's Winton Oil Colors. These are student grade paints but they're pretty good and very inexpensive. Now for my color palette I'm using your usual suspects here. Uh, titanium White, Lemon Yellow, Cadmium Yellow, Cadmium Red, Cadmium Red Deep, Permanent Rose, French Ultramarine, Phthalo Blue, Sap Green, Ivory Black, Burnt Sienna and Raw Sienna. This is a very basic palette, you would find this on any student's palette really, uh, but these are just fine for this painting. So now I can start with my block in. Now my block in is going to be just covering the entire canvas with color, no details, just simple brush strokes. I just want to get the whole thing covered with paint and as you can see the background is not really pretty now, but later on I'm going to refine it and make it more beautiful. So after around 10 minutes, I'm done with the background and now I can move on to the rest of the painting. So there's a lot of methods when it comes to starting a, an animal's face on a painting. Uh, there's a lot of starting points you can take. A lot of artists will start from the eye or from another point. Me personally, I love to start from the nose. I think that everything can originate from the nose. And as you can see, I can move around the nose very easily. Now on the blocking stage I'm not only covering the entire canvas with paint but also I'm using very very saturated tones and the reason why I do this is because later on when I'm on my detail stage I can always bring those tones down. So my block in is almost done here and again as you can see it's very simple there is no details at all, my brush strokes are very loose, the paint is very thin, uh, I'm just covering the canvas with color. By this point I only spent like 15 minutes on it, uh, most of the time spent is on mixing color because painting itself, again, because of no details, it's very simple. Here you can see me actually correcting the eye, since on the original design you can't see the dog's left eye, but the owners told me that they wanted to see both eyes on the painting, so I respect their wishes and I get it done. So after around 25 minutes doing the block-in, I can finally call it done and then let it dry for a couple of days. So now as you can see the entire piece is covered in paint, uh, it doesn't look very good, this is the point where if anybody 
comes into the studio, they will tell me that I went absolutely insane. Uh, but all of this will make sense later. So after leaving the painting to dry for a couple of days, what I'm going to do is apply a very light glaze over the whole thing. And the reason why I do this is because I want to actually saturate the colors a little bit more. Uh, and I'm doing this because of my next step. Now this is where my method is very different from your usual uh, blocking, modeling and refining stages. Because on my next step, I'm actually going to go directly to refining. So now with my glazing done, I can start laying some details on my painting. So I'll start off with a dark tone and just working my way around the hairs, creating some edges between them. And I do this because I'm very used to drawing more than painting. So what I do is basically create the shadows between the hairs, but leave some space for the light hairs uh, for me to do them later. So. When I do it by this method, I can actually do both things at the same time without having to wait for the paint to dry to apply uh, light hairs on top of the dark ones. This technique is very helpful if you want to work faster, because usually what you would do naturally is paint the entire thing with a dark tone and then wait for it to dry and then paint little hairs on top. But with this method, it's way faster and actually I think the outcome is way better. So now I'm starting to refine the nose and put some details on the nose and this is very fun. The nose is the best part to work on because you can really make it shine and put these little color dots that you will see now and create this, this beautiful texture on it. It's by far one of my favorite parts to paint. So after I'm finished with the nose I can start working on the hair. Uh, I'm using very saturated colors here, but I'm going to tone it down afterwards. This is just to make the painting look a little bit warmer. Uh, now there's no much way around it when it comes to hair. You have to paint almost all of it. There's no many tricks. There's no secret techniques. It is what it is. Now lucky for me, I really enjoy painting hair, so this is not a big deal, but it's very slow and tedious. Now one of the secrets about painting hair actually is not to work on every single hair. It will look like it, but it's better if you actually work on hair strands. See when you work on hair strands, you're actually treating it like it has shape, like it has volume. So it forces you to treat it like an object, which it is. But you know, if you do every single hair, uh, you lose a lot of the volume, you lose those very smooth transitions of hue, uh, it's way better if you work on the whole hair strand. But you know, here you can see me really working hair by hair almost, and yeah, it's very slow. Uh, a lot of times when people ask me about it, when they see my paintings, they ask me, Sebastian, what is the secret? What is the technique? And unfortunately, I have to disappoint everybody and tell them there's no secret, there's no technique. It's just it is what it is. Everything you see in front of you that is that has been painted, it was done the way you see it. There is no tricks and the end of the day is just me with my tiny brush doing almost every single hair. Now I'm laying out some dark tones before I move on to the next parts of the painting and right now I'm going to work on the eye a little bit. Uh, working on eyes is easier than people think. Uh, the goal with eyes, you have to make it look like it's glass, basically. Now, I'm not a big fan of making super detailed eyes. I think it's a little bit uncanny. I do just the right amount of detail to make them look nice and glassy, and then I move on. So I do it very quickly, and just with uh, no more than two hours of work, my eyes are done. So as you can see, the eye looks pretty good. And next, I will do the same thing that I've done before with the other hairs. I'll do the same with all the hairs on the head of this dog. Now there's no much to talk about here, so I'll put some music now and let you guys see the rest of the process.
and welcome back guys so this is the finished head it looks pretty good I'm very satisfied with it and now I can move on to the rest of the body now for the body I'm gonna use the same techniques uh, nothing too different the only difference is that the body is gonna have less details than the head see uh, I want people to focus on the face of the dog which is the most important part of the portrait so the body is just going to act as a support of the head which it literally is but what I mean by this is just that it's gonna have less details, that's all. And just like that, the painting is done. I'm very happy with how it looks, I'm very happy with the hairs, with the lighting, it looks very beautiful. As you can see, I painted the background again, uh, I didn't film that because there was not really much to show, uh, the background is very simple, but I'm very very happy with this painting and I can't wait to send it to the owner. Alright guys, that's the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up uh, and consider subscribing. That will help a lot. Uh, tune in next time where I'm going to show you how I'm doing this thing. It's still in the very early stages, but it's already looking pretty good. So uh, make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified for this one. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye. Mwah.